This is Sean Payton, head coach of the New Orleans Saints. What's with this Saints happy cast? This has to be the worst Saints podcast in the world. Ralph can't say anyone's name right. Andrew doesn't know football. Everyone has a hard time listening to Dave. And is Kevin even there tonight? The audio with this podcast, my God, the audio, it's, it's painful. All right, everybody, welcome to a Wednesday edition of the Saints Happy Hour podcast. Thanks for joining us on a free show. Everybody gets this one because, Andrew, this is a fun topic. We worked really hard at making this list and editing the sound and stuff. This is our top five Saints plays of 2019. Um, before we count them down, I'm just going to lay out my criteria for how I rank them because yours are different from mine vastly. Yeah. Some of them are the same, but the rankings are vastly different. I rank these of how much fun and joy did they give me and will I remember them in years to come, the specific play. And that's how I did my rankings five to one. Um, so that's how I thought of it. Not necessarily as the significance or that it was mostly how much joy did they give me and will I remember them in like five years wow that's interesting yeah I, w I wonder if I would have ranked them a bit differently if I thought about like the five-year arc thing um I'm really excited about this and I'm excited to present it to you guys uh feel free to at me uh <laughs> in the discord channel or you know on social media and hate me all, all I want to say is like look this is completely arbitrary. Completely. I pick the five plays I like the most. So, like, if you get all pissed, yeah. like, just realize that I might be wrong, but I did a ton of research. I watched a lot of film, and it was just, like, these were the five that stood out to me. And I, I'll say, like, my criteria was kind of all over the map, actually. Like, I don't know that I had, like, one set yeah. criteria. Um, it's just, like, I picked this play because it, it's significant in this way. And I like this play for a different reason. So, like, I think I think why my list might make fans more mad is that it's just kind of all over the place. What play? What play? Before we get to the five, what play did you have the hardest time leaving off? Uh, probably the Deontay Harris punt return. Oh my um, god, I mean, you're just, a communist. I mean, it was just it was just such an awesome play, but it's just like. He made one cut and he scored. You know, yeah. so like while it was exciting, it was just like, yeah. 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 My hardest play to leave off was, um, the 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 uh, the Vaughn Bell fumble, the pick up fumble in Seattle. It was weird, but it was such a fun, exciting moment. And then, yeah, the Saints they beat the hell out of Dak in the Dallas game. Like I had a hard time just like I wanted to take one of those sacks and put it in, but I didn't. So. The thing I'm really looking forward to is that someone's going to find – like, because Saints Twitter and Saints social media, I mean, yeah. you, patrons, you guys always do this to us. You're going to find some play that is so much better than everything we've picked, and you're going to be like, how could you guys forget this? And, Ralph, you and I both are just going to be like, oh, my God, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, how, but, how could we leave And – you know and I will say that's 100% accurate because when we did uh, COVID-19 and quarantining has rotted our brains, I think. And, and, and full disclosure, when me and Andrew did the top five Saints quarterback countdown, we forgot that Jim Everett beat the shit out of Jim Rome. And I had to go back and recut it and, and drop that in so you, you, you people didn't realize that we totally forgot about him beating up Jim Rome. That. Come um, on, man. We, we knew all along. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so here is um, here's your number five. Third down. Bridgewater under pressure. Lofts. Oh, oh, my. What a throw and what a catch by Thomas. And are they saying he's down? They are. There's Bridgewater. That's a that's a heck of a throw. That was, that was good coverage. So there you go. There's your number five. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's one of those things where um, I watched a lot of Teddy Bridgewater tape, and it was important to me to have a Teddy Bridgewater play in this top five because he was such a significant story. I just feel like him going yep. five and zero and the success that the team had in 2019. So much of it hinged on Teddy Bridgewater stepping in and performing the way he did. 
And I watched a lot of tape on Teddy. And, you know, the thing that jumped out at me was just I forgot how freaking good he played. And, yes, I know the offense only scored 12 points and four field goals against Dallas. So, like, they're, they're kind of up and down in some places. But, like, when you look at some of the throws and the plays that he makes, like, he was just so good. solid and really impressive. And I would just say that, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, like, I felt like I had to do a play. And so for me, the signature moment is he is rolling to the left and he kind of drops the ball in the bucket downfield, drops it. And Michael Thomas is double covered. The ball is the only place it can be where he has to make a ridiculous over the shoulder catch. The two defenders can do nothing to stop it. And he ends up like it's unclear if he's down or not, and then he ends up getting in the end zone. And he, I don't, I don't think they end up getting a touchdown on the play after review. But the bottom line is like to me that play was the most incredible and exciting. And if there were ever any questions about can Teddy Bridgewater do it, is he good enough, does he have the it factor? You watch that play where he's rolling to his left, throwing across his body. The ball placement just couldn't be better. And you're like, holy shit, this, unquestionably this guy's a starting quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, and I like the fact that you included this one because that Chicago game, the Saints didn't have Kamara. They didn't have Jared Cook. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater was playing for Breeze. Bears are a top eight defense. Michael Thomas destroyed them. Bridgewater looked like a top 16 NFL starting quarterback. And it was just... I remember me and you texting during the game. We're like, they're skull dragging Chicago. They're missing all these guys on offense, and it doesn't even matter. This is magical. So like, this th th that game seriously is, I think, Sean Payton's masterpiece. Yeah. When you consider all that, they ran the pitch. They ran the fullback pitch play with with line to Taysom Hill. Like it was just so so much fun. This is my fifth. No, this is my number five. First and goal from the five. Breeze under center eye formation. Got fakes it. the handoff. Looks to throw. Wide open. Touchdown! Josh Hill! 19 years. 273 games. Over 76,000 yards. And now, 540 touchdowns. Drew Brees take a bow. I put this one as five. I know he breaks the touchdown record. And Monday night game, he was awesome. He only had the one incompletion. But here's the thing. I think in, in three to five years when we talk about 2019 and we talk about Drew Brees, we'll list the fact that he got the touchdown record. But like individual plays that he makes, the spin play against Atlanta – in 2018 will be more memorable you know other throws will be more memorable this will just be a, a record in a moment i don't think the actual play will be that memorable uh and the referees of course cheated him out of it he should have had it earlier right before the half but that's neither here nor there but this is my five the 2020 new orleans saints season is almost here for this season join the best saints fan community in the world saints happy hour connecting you with the most passionate saints fans around for only 10 bucks a month come have fun and laugh with us get the saints happy hour booze bundle as a welcome gift featuring four limited edition collector swag items not available in any stores you'll also get members only access to the best saints podcast every day completely ad free and exclusive access to the saints happy hour private discord chat room where you can talk saints football with our community members 24 7 and get access to special giveaways and prizes make 2020 saints football more fun by joining saints happy hour go to saintshappyhour.com that's saintshappyhour.com and sign up today yeah i mean I struggle with plays like this because, like, the significance is obviously enormous. I mean, it, it really is like the it, – it's him breaking the record. So it's it's just a major moment in NFL history, not just Saints history, you know. Um, so I, while I respect the significance, it's not in my top five because it's really just, like, top five plays. And so I, I kept out, like, the play – like, to me, I wanted to just keep it more, like – what's great about that play specifically and kind of leave moments oh, out yeah. moments significant. So I didn't have this in my top five for that reason. And I just think Josh Hill was so wide open on this play. And it was a play <laughs> was. action where the linebacker just completely <laughs> bit and like Ralph, you could have made that throw with your bad arm and, and it would have been a touchdown. So, you know, I, I think 
great play design, terrible defense. Um, but, you know, I think in terms of plays, like it just didn't, I, I mean, I, I get why you put it on there and I respect it. I, that's why I left it out though. Yeah. This is my, this is my number four, uh, another record. Michael Thomas lot to the left. Breeze looking his way and there it is. A new NFL record reaching across for a touchdown. How about it? How about it? Congratulations to Michael Thomas, and what a way to do it. Well, it wasn't a touchdown. They reviewed it and called it back as a touchdown, but it was the record breaker. And I know it's not exciting play, but, man, Michael Thomas broke the freaking NFL record for receptions. That one will stick with me for a while. I'll remember that it was in Carolina. This was my number four. I had a harder time leaving this one off. Um, again, like, that's great that it's a – big moment but you know again i wanted to really make it about plays and degree of difficulty this wasn't that difficult i think if he scores maybe i feel a little bit different but they like you said they ended up wiping that touchdown off the board um and again like i get th this one was harder for me to to leave off and certainly breaking the catch record was a ridiculous accomplishment and that was done over the course of a season you know breezes was done over the course of a career so the fact that he did it all in one season, breaking that record, made me – that's why I had a harder time with it, I guess. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, this is just one of, like, the 150-plus catches that Michael Thomas had in the season. There's just so many to pick from. What, it's just like – what, uh, you know? What's your number four? Well, you want to play it first? What, I can't remember what it is. Tell me what it is. Oh, uh, shoot. I'm blanking. Is it the uh, is it the Jared Cook catch? Oh yeah. Now Breeze to the end zone. What a catch by Jared Cook for another Saints touchdown. Uh, Eric Reed is saying that he pushed off at the end of this route. Nonetheless, how about the catch? The one-handed. Yeah, that was against Carolina final week of the year. It was year. against Carolina, and you know, it, it, Jared Cook. Like if you go back and watch his highlights, I mean, he has some insane plays, some insane catches. And it's so funny to me that early in his career, he was kind of known as a guy that didn't run good routes, didn't have good concentration, uh, would have lapses and just it, basically he was Kobe Fleener. Right. Um, and it's, it's just really funny to me because you see some of these catches that he makes this season, especially in the second half of the year. Um, I mean, I, I would say you look yeah, at the that, catch against San Francisco was a hard leave out, too. And if he doesn't get concussed yeah. against the San Francisco 49ers, maybe the entire Saints playoff experience this, this past year would have been different. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah. But I know so he, he has ridiculous hands. And uh, to me, this one was just like highest degree of difficulty. So it didn't come in a big moment. It wasn't. I mean, they were already up a bunch and. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't like a significant thing, but it's just to me, it's just about degree of difficulty. This is my favorite because it's it's just an incredible play where he's pretty well covered on the inside by Eric Reed. And so Breeze goes back shoulder and he just turns around, reaches out with one hand and makes a one handed catch and pulls it in. And it's just he, he makes it look so effort effortless and easy that you don't you don't even totally appreciate just how ridiculous of a catch that is. Yeah. Um, and Jared Cook, we'll have something on him also this week. If he's healthy in 2020, he is going to just destroy people because he is – he the Saints, it took him a while, but they got him fully integrated into that offense. And he's – with Sanders and Thomas and Kamara, he is going to wreck people. So this is my uh, number three. Spot and hold her down. The kick is up. It's good! It's good! 58 yards. Will Lutz with the game winner. Saints win it. 30 to 28. I love that. I love that call so much by, by uh, Zach Streep. And really, Andrew, this put the Saints season back on track. They were on the verge of, like, gagging it away against the Texans. Kenny Stills, they left him open up the seam. They had blown it, but the Texans left just enough time. Drew Brees was masterful to get him down there. He kicks it from 58 yards, and him, The my favorite part is as soon as it left his foot, him and Morstead are celebrating, and it's not even through the uprights. Like, 
It was just, yeah. and it was amazing. I was there. Everybody walked out the stadium. It was just an amazing moment. And it really set their season up to succeed because Drew Brees got hurt the next week against the Rams. They, if he misses that kick, they could have been 0-2 going to Seattle. Like, it was a huge, huge moment. I had a hard time not putting it higher. Yeah, it's higher for me. Um, you know, there, there are a few moments in this season where a play happens and I just jump out of my couch, double fist pumps, and I'm just screaming. You know, just like you get so charged with that rush of energy. Um and, you know, usually it only happens two or three times a season. And that was one of those moments for me. And, uh, I mean, just it was just just the, the rush that you get winning on a 58-yard field goal and just the degree of difficulty. Anyway, it was much higher for me. Yeah. Um, well, but we'll talk about it more. Here's your, here's your number three. This just a straight run to the left. They can't stop him. He's still going. Taysom Hill. Twenty-eight yard carry. Well, Anthony Harris comes up. He's got a chance to make a tackle on it. He just refuses. He lowers. He lowers his shoulder, like he's Marshawn Lynch. I mean, he goes beast mode on him. It's superb. Just a great play. Yeah, yeah. That that play. You know, the thing about that play is really that was the one moment in the playoffs. He had the long pass to Deontay Harris, and that was cool, but. There was a moment in that Saints Vikings game where you felt like, man, we laid an egg. We're going to lose. And then you started to feel this momentum yep. come back the Saints way. The defense was starting to get stops. And Taysom Hill was just like, you just felt like, he, and obviously we know how it all ended, but in that moment, yeah, you just felt like Taysom Hill was just like, fuck this. I'm going to win this game on my own. Yeah. And I just remember that moment. And how loud the crowd was. Yeah, it he was. Just, he, and it's just a simple sweep to the left, but he runs over Anthony Harris. I mean, just completely runs, runs him over, over. Trucks him. And trucks him. And then he just refuses to go down. And he ends up getting about a 38-yard run, like plowing through people. And if you've ever played Super Tech Mobile, you know, it's like when you run with Ironhead Hayward sometimes, you, he's carrying the ball. And, and, and defenders just bounce off of him, you know, in the game. That's kind of what it felt like. People were just bouncing off of Taysom Hill as he continued yeah. running. And it, that's the, that's I, the exact. I felt like that was the biggest moment in the playoff game. Yeah. Where you just, that play, you just felt like, we're going to win this game. And it, Taysom Hill is going to do it all by himself. Yeah. And it was a sense of, they played like garbage, but this week, will have no bearing on how they play in Green Bay. We just need to escape. Taysom is going to allow us. He's going to drag us across the finish line. Unfortunately, I didn't put this play in my top five because just my feeling of it, I can't separate the fact the next play, Drew Brees got sacked and fumbled. Yeah. So I didn't have it yeah. higher. Um, but you, my number two – you didn't even have in your top five. Your number two was the Lutz kick. Uh, this was my um, – actually, yeah, this was my number two, which you have even higher. Uh, and, I mean, this, this play is going to live fucking forever. And I had a hard time not putting it number one. But it's going to live forever. And the reason it's going to live forever is because we love it so much, we have it in a different language. Oh, deception! Deception! Matt Ryan! <laughs> oh my god! We eine Puppe gibt er in den Stiff haben und er fliegt auf den Boden! Hör doch mal auf! I. Uh, yeah, that's my number one right there. How could it not be? And it, it, the thing is, it has everything. It has ridiculousness, fat guy, interception. It has comedy. It has the German guys calling it. And just the cackling, the fact that the word stiff arm in German is stiff arm. You know, the, <laughs> fa the, fa the fact that Matt Ryan in German is Matt Ryan, you know, and, and, and just the fact that it's the Falcons. The fact that it's Matt Ryan, the On fact that he gets stiff, stiff armed and just totally embarrassed, like that play. You, you said like your your uh, your reason for evaluation here was like, what is this going to mean to us in five years? 
Ralph, like that play will last 50 years. That shy tunnel, <laughs> like that shy tunnel play is so amazing. It's a freaking emoji on our discord channel. That's how amazing that play was. It is Steve Gleason blocking the punt. Awesome. Except it has ridiculously hilarious Germans cackling. Yeah. And, and so it lives I in think, gift like, form too podcast, forever. Like you just said, no, by the way, Ralph, our How Discord channel, if you like to talk Saints and you love it, uh, you should get in our Discord channel if you're a patron. If you're not a patron, it's one of the great things we have because you can talk Saints and you don't have to worry about all the other crap of social media like Facebook and Twitter. It's just Saints people and we're nice to each other because we have common interest and it's private. So think about doing that. Um but like Ma, we that was your Ralph, like the guiding light, like what's most important for our podcast. And it's just like, we always say it's got to be fun. It's, it's got to be, be fun. ridiculous. This checks all the boxes, all the boxes. And I just think it's the most on brand thing for our podcast to ever happen on a saints field. Put it this way. We did a fun giveaway where Dave co-host of the show he made a pair of socks because we said to the patrons, hey, we want to get you guys, you, we want you to use the custom RSS feed in your podcast player. And we gave away a pair of socks, uh, a shy Tuttle socks. And we had like a ton of people sign up for the RSS feed, which was great. But also people were like, I didn't win, but can I buy the socks? Like so many people <laughs> were DMing me, man. The shy Tuttle play it will live forever. The only reason I didn't have it number one is one to make this our top five list more interesting. If me and Andrew agree, it's not as fun. That's part of it. But the main reason why I put this number one is more so than any play during the year for the Saints. This had me jumping around my house, fist pumping, high fiving my kid, going bananas. Half is back in the way. It's a high punt, but short. Harris fields it at the 48, makes two miss. He's off to the races, the 40, the 35, the 30. Deontay Harris into the end zone. No flags on the field, and the Saints strike first on special teams. The reason why I love it, Andrew, and, and you said it before the show, you know, the, before the show, it was, was one cut. It, it's not that, like, spectacular of a punt return, but in the moment, Drew Brees had gotten hurt the week before. They were going to Seattle. Seattle had never lost a September game that Russell Wilson had started. And we were like, "Is how is this going to be? Is it going to be a disaster? Are they going to be able to do it? It's raining in Seattle. How is this going to go? How is the rest of 2019 going to go? Are we going to are they going to fall off a cliff? Is this going to be really be okay?" Deontay Harris caught that punt, took it to the house, and I was like, Fuck, this is going to be fine. We're going to figure, they're going to figure a way through this without Drew Brees. And it made me excited. I got ridiculously pumped. And that's why this play was number one for me. Well, when a team doesn't really have a good chance, a lot of times I'll use this line on you, Ralph. And I remember using it before this game that, you know, this team X doesn't have a chance to beat team Y. Unless shenanigans. Shenanigans. And I, I felt like going into this game, the Saints probably weren't going to win in Seattle unless we had shenanigans. And and they got a punt return, and then they got a defensive touchdown. All later, the right? shenanigans. So, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I remember texting you after the punt return, and then again after the defensive touchdown, and I'm texting you in all caps, shenanigans. You, I think you, I think <laughs> you texted like, oh God, shenanigan apocalypse is what you texted yeah. at me. And so they went into Seattle and they won. And that was despite Russell Wilson making me shit my pants for a while there because he caught fire late in that game. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, I mean, no, that the play was awesome. I, I'll be honest, like, I didn't include this because I felt like there were other returns to me with Deontay Harris that were more exciting than that one. Just better plays. He just, just happened to yeah. score on that one and he didn't score on some others, but... I mean, Harris was amazing all year. So the fact that I didn't include him at all in this top five is kind of lame. You know, I, I wish I had found a place to maybe uh, sneak him in. But, you know, I, I, I like my top five. I mean, you know, Shy Tuttle, number one, obviously. Lutz oh. has to be in there. I felt like Teddy had to be in there. The Jared Cook catch was amazing. And I just felt like Taysom Hill had to be in there, too. So I leave out Deontay. 
but I respect that he's your number one. Uh, I mean, what an amazing season he had. And, um, you know, certainly I think when you look at him going to the Pro Bowl, this that, that play had a, a lot to do with it. Yeah, I mean, this – list it was it's hard when you when the saints are 13 and 3 you have so many it had so many and i'm sure we've left off a couple that people are going to burn us at the stake for um I, it's just it was it was fun compiling the the these highlights and that sort of thing and it made me realize that the saints are so freaking deep and i think Whatever the 2020 season is going to be, whether it's going to be 16 games or 8 or 6 or whatever the hell the NFL is going to give us, they're going to give us some sort of season. I think the Saints having this ridiculously deep roster, when you combine football players get injured normally all the time, plus with COVID, I think the Saints are set up to really succeed in a way that other teams are not. And it just re- – doing these highlights again, Andrew, it just got me fired up again for 2020 and uh, just excited about this roster, how deep it is. Uh, and I cannot – I cannot wait for us to have actual football. I need it so, so badly. Well, I, it just reminded me of how good this offense is, like how good the weapons are. And just rewatching the film of Breeze, like Breeze is just so good at getting the ball out. Yeah. And usually his placement is pretty good. But it just made me realize, like, shoot, man, part of the reason why Breeze at his age is still performing well is he's got fucking Camara and Mike yeah. Thomas and a great offensive line and Jared Cook. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just picturing Breeze, like, man, if he was in a shit offense, like, everyone would just be talking about how he's done. You know, but like, but you look at all these weapons around him, and I really feel like Taysom Hill in the second half of the year and Jared Cook in the second half of the year, those two really hit their stride. And so now you add Emmanuel Sanders, you know, and I think yeah. when Kamara got hurt, like at the beginning of the year, they didn't really know what they had in Latavius Murray. They weren't using him a ton. You know, he got a lot better uh, as the season wore on. And I just think now you add Emmanuel San- Sanders. Troutman's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, you know, Cesar Ruiz, like, you just feel like up front they might be a little bit better this year. And so I just think you add all of that, Ralph. And this offense was already like you just rewatched this offense be so potent. You know, we haven't even mentioned Deontay Harris, who I think has an interesting role in the offense probably this year. And like, I just think, my God, this offense is terrifying. It is well, terrifying. Well, I, I here- think. This offense could be 2011 good. Well, here's the thing with the Saints that I think stat nerds and, and people that we like on Twitter. Mina Kynes is great. She was a great guest. I love her on Twitter. She's very analytics-based and all that. What I think the analytics nerds don't understand with the Saints offense is they have so many weapons now. A defense cannot cover them all. And there will be a weak spot somewhere and Drew Brees is so sharp with his reads and his processing. He is going to find that weak spot 99 times out of 100, no matter what defense you run. So his arm strength is almost fucking irrelevant. It's not quite irrelevant, but it almost is because this offense is so loaded that a defense can't possibly box him in and make him they you know if the saints only had one weapon or their offensive line was crappy or whatever our team could say hey drew we're gonna make you throw it deep we're gonna make you throw it to the hash marks and you can't do it and you're fucked and it could be done teams did it to peyton manning at the end of his career uh but the saints offense is so loaded he's just like you a defense cannot do that they cannot force him into doing the thing that he doesn't want to do because the Saints just have so many freaking weapons. Totally. Yeah, and it's like, uh, I I recommend revisiting this stuff because it makes you, I mean, it made me just so much more excited for Saints football. Like, it's almost, it's not that you forget, but it's like, oh man, I need to watch this again. It made me so excited. I texted Dave and I was like, Dave, where is the custom shot? glass for the booze bundle i need it i want to watch old saints film right now pour the honey bourbon and do shots in june where is it he's like it's going to be there next week that's 
<laughs> That's how excited I got cutting these highlight clips for the top five. So, guys, thanks again for joining us. We appreciate everybody who's a part of the Saints Happy Hour community. If you are a Saints Happy Hour patron, sign up for the Discord. There's 130 of you that haven't. Our Discord channel is fucking magic and gives you a chance and an excuse to fuck off at work all day and your boss never has to see it because it's not public like Twitter or Facebook. So do it. So for Andrew, I'm Ralph. We will see you again tomorrow. <laughs>